Research Awards from Mapua University Power Enhancement of Plant Microbial Fuel Cells Through Stacking and Compartmentalization From De La Salle University, the combined effects of NMT and HNCL to the workability and compressive strength of concrete. From University of Perpetual Health System, Calamba, exploratory study using bacteria Bacillus subtilis as a self-healing, a basis for strengthening infrastructure in the Philippine setting. From Cagayan State University, development and fabrication of field flush control barrel as an alternative pico hydro power harvesting system. From Iloilo Amang Rodriguez Institute of Science and Technology, 360-degree rotating pro projector controlled by Android phone. From the Technological Institute of the Philippines, Quezon City, Magnetic Gears for Lossless Power Transmission From the University of Perpetual Health System Delta Calamba The Cane's Bed Wheelchair From the Technological University of the Philippines, Manila, Arduino-based sound acquisition system for classifying coconut maturity using fast Fourier algorithm. From the Technological Institute of the Philippines, Quezon City, design and fabrication of a walking frame intended for safe stair climbing of the elderly and differently abled person. Please welcome the panel of evaluators, Engineer Edgar I. Garcia. Engineer May Fatima Ophelia Cruz Dr. Teresita C. Fortuna Dr. Danilo and Pilar
Dr. Amelia T. Marquez. And Engineer Eric Near Realuyo. And with your host, Professor Jonna Carla Vien. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. We are now celebrating the third day of the 12 annual research awards with the theme Pagpapayabong ng Agham at Teknolohiya para sa Sambayanan. This event is made possible by the Polytechnic University of the Philippines in cooperation with the Department of Science and Technology, DOST Technology Application and Promotion Institute, DOST Philippine Council for Industry, Energy and Emerging Technology, Research and Development, Norda International Distributors, and this event was brought to you by Esplana Engineering Review Center, Land Bank of the Philippines, Bounty Agro Ventures Incorporated, BDO Unibank Incorporated, One Food Group Management Services Incorporated. Also, we would like to give thanks to the following Accenture, Paperlink, Federation of Alumni Associations of the Philippines Incorporated, PUP College of Engineering Association, Smart, Emerson, Primer Group of Companies. Presenting research paper is a vital component of professional work. Communicating research findings provides an opportunity to inform others of a current investigation which could lead to future speaking opportunities, grants future research projects, business meetings, and natural connections. Presenting academic material requires full preparation and planning to effectively communicate to your audience. It is important to consider the diversity of expertise within a group of educators says, who possess knowledge of the different aspects of the papers being presented. Just a recap of the event's highlights. Last Wednesday, we had witnessed the Young Engineers, Inventors, Innovators Exhibit and Forum on the Intellectual Property Awareness and research colloquium. Yesterday, the forum was about the commercialization and publication of researches. And for today, we have just witnessed the opening of the exhibits for the finalists of the 12th Annual Research Awards 2019. And later, we shall have the scientific research presentation. To formally begin our program, may I request everyone to please stand for the doxology and the singing of the Philippine National Anthem.
Noon pa man, malaki na ang naging bahagi ng mga kababaihan sa lipunang Pilipino. Kaisa sila sa marugdob na paghahangad ng kalayaan ng ating lahi. Kabilang sila sa paglinang ng ating makulay na sining at mayamang kultura. Kasapi sila sa pagtataguyod ng mga adhikain ng kapwa mamamayan at sa pagtugon sa mga pangangailangan ng lipunan. Katuwang sila sa pagtuklas sa mga larangan ng agham at medisina. Kapanalig sila sa pagpapairal ng batas, karapatan at katarungan para sa lahat. Kapahagi sila sa paglilingkod sa bayan at sa pagpapanatili ng demokrasyang Pilipino. Sa paglipas ng panahon, hindi nagmaliw ang kanilang pag-ibig sa ating inang bayan. Mga kababayan, ito ang alay ng mga kababaihang Pilipino para sa bayan. Tumayo po tayong lahat at sabay-sabay nating awitin ang pambansang awit ng Pilipinas. may now be seated. To give us the welcome remarks, it is my pleasure to call the Dean of the College of Engineering, Dr. Remedios G. Ado. Let's give her a warm round of applause. Our distinguished panel of evaluators, Engineer Edgar Garcia, Engineer May Fatima Ofelia Cruz, Dr. Teresita C. Fortuna, Dr. Danilo N. Pilar, Dr. Amelia T. Marquez, Engineer Eric Neil Realuyo, our assistant for academic affairs, Dr. Eds Mariano, to the faculty members, advisors, student, isang magandang araw po sa ating lahat. It is my great pride that everyone to greet you a happy National Women's Month. Nalaman lang natin kasi kanina libre sa LRT mga babae, di ba po? Uh, as we celebrate the National Women's Month, kasabay po ng ating pagdiriwang ng 12 araw with the team pagpapayabong ng agham at teknolohiya para sa sambayan. Being a woman engineer, I am proud to say that I was able to surmount the challenges of the male-dominated industry. Today, I stand in front of you celebrating the excellence in engineering education. Allow me to recognize the significant roles of women engineering educators who were able to prove to the society that women can make change for the society. Also, we can make change for our fellow women. I would like to recommend our young women students who gradually making their names in the various fields of engineering. Keep the spirit high. Never let anyone intimidate you because of your gender. According to the Commission of Higher Education, 59.4% of the population of the students enrolled in the engineering and technology programs, both in private and public higher education institutions, are male. And 40.6% are Female, kami po yun. 
It is evident that engineering is a male-dominated field. However, despite of the challenges of the figure, women still excel and place on top. Uh, nandito po ang mga living legend na mga kababaihan. Ang ating former Board of Regents and Director of DOST NCR, Dr. Fortuna, our ABPAA, Eds Mariano, <laughs> our Chairperson, Engineer Vilma Perez, nandiyan po sila, and the overall Chair of the Araw, Engineer Jose Linda Golpeo. These are all female leaders, our student finalists. May I request all the women in this hall to stand and be recognized. Tayo po tayo, mga estudyante, mga babaeng estudyante. And let's give them a round of applause. Kakaunti lang ba kaming babae? Do? Salamat po. Also, I would like to recognize the males who are respectful and conscious of women's rights are very supportive in empowering the women in the field of engineering. Tayo naman po ang mga kalalakihan and let's give them a round of applause. Parang mas marami ang babae. <laughs> so as we celebrate the 12 Arrow and Excellence in Engineering Education, I would like to encourage everyone to take part in the transformation of engineering research into industry adapted research where all gender are welcome to establish a career and life. Muli, isa pong mainit na pagtanggap sa inyong at dito sa aming sintang paaralan. Sa pagsikat ng araw, atin pumuling masisilayan ang maganda at sunod-sunod na darating na araw. Salamat po. very much, Dr. Ado. To give us an inspirational message, may I call the Assistant to the Vice President for Academic Affairs, Professor Adeline Mariano. Wala tayong tungtungan dito. Ma oh, hindi nila napaghandaan yung height natin. Um, <laughs> good morning, ladies and gentlemen, um, to the panel of evaluators, a special mention. Dr. Here, ma'am. It is, can you see me, guys? It is indeed a fine day to come to PUP and participate in a venture like this. For 12 years now, we have been gathering to give honor for the fine works our students have done in pursuit of discovering knowledge. I know we always look forward for these activities as these indicate that our students are continuously being inspired to do the best and that our faculty members, especially the advisors of our researchers, researchers, okay, the deans and the chairpersons and other officials are satisfactorily doing their jobs in guiding our students towards excellence. To our students, especially the finalists, know that more than gaining personal honor, and meeting course requirements. Researching has far more noble achievement, and that is sustaining our society's need for growth. It will always be an awe-inspiring thing to ponder how simple and practical tools like post-it, the selfie stick, and neck pillows had such impacts alongside digital discoveries. Inventors of these things I've mentioned 
are probably just as hopeful back then as someone of you are. And like Thomas Edison and Nikola Tesla have tried way too many times but didn't lose heart. So we hope some, if not all of you, the finalists, okay, will have the same attitude towards discovering. For as long as we're looking into becoming contributive members of our nation, I believe we will keep working until we have achieved what we are aiming for. Therefore, to all our students who know they have done their best, with or without recognition, not settling for mediocrity is reason enough for us to be proud of you. Let's give them a round of applause, especially the finalists. Congratulations to our awardees and here's to a more annual research awards. Maraming salamat. Thank you very much. At this point, we would like to thank the following schools who participated in this event. We have Bataan Peninsula State University, Bulacan State University, Cagayan State University, De La Salle University, Manila, Iloyo Among Rodriguez Institute of Science and Technology, FAU Institute of Technology, Holy Angel University, ICCT Colleges Foundation Incorporated, Jose Rizal University, Mapua University, Marinduque State College, the National University, Palumpon Institute of Technology, Pamantasa ng Lumsod ng Maynila, Polytechnic University of the Philippines, Technological Institute of the Philippines, Technological University of the Philippines, University of Perpetual Health Delta System, and the University of the East. Thank you very much for your participation in the 12th Annual Research Awards. At this point, I would like to discuss the criteria for or the categories for the scientific research presentation. We have technical viability, 25%. Commercial viability, 30%. Social impact and relevance, 15%. Execution and design of prototype, 10%. Contribution to the advancement of science and technology, 20%. And overall, that's 100%. So later on, we shall witness the presentation of the different schools and universities who participated in this event. Good luck to all of you. And also at this point, I would like to introduce the panel of evaluators. First member of the panel of evaluators, we have the Director for Technology Application and Promotion Institute from the Department of Science and Technology. Let's all welcome Engineer Edgar I. Garcia. Good morning, sir, and welcome to PUP 12 Animal Research Awards. Next member for our evaluators, she is the Senior Logic Integration Engineer from Digital Development Department, a Design Structure Architect, Microelectronics Laboratory, formerly Intel Microlab, from the University of the Philippines, Diliman. And she is a graduate of BIS. B.S. Computer Engineering and holds a degree of Master in Technological Management from UP Diliman. She is none other than Engineer Maria Fatima Ophelia D. Cruz. Good morning, ma'am. Next, we have a horticulturist, a plant 
physiologist and she is in service for 12 years in the regional director of the department of science and technology and presently she is the president of colegio de montenlupa which is an engineering school it is my pleasure to introduce dr teresita c fortuna good morning po Next, we have the Chief of the Technology Division, Division, Metal Industry Research and Development Center. We have Dr. Danilo and Pilar. Then we have the founder of the Mega Review and Tutorial Center. May I call Dr. Amelia T. Marquez. And last but not the least, he is an accredited materials engineer, a registered master plumber, the second placer in the CE board examination with a rating of 96%, the owner of the Realio Builders and Consultancy, the vice president of Esplana Engineering Review Center, and holds a degree of Master of Science in Civil Engineering, Major in Structural Engineering. May I introduce Engineer Eric Neal D. Realuyo. Okay, so we have just introduced the panel of our evaluators, and in a few minutes, we shall be having the science, so the scientific research presentation. Okay, at this point. We are opening the exhibits for the different participating schools and universities. And may we request the panel of our evaluators to visit each of the booths together with our chair and the faculty members of the College of Engineering. Thank you very much. We may visit the different booths set by our participants for you to be able to see them.
the 12th annual research made possible by the Polytechnic University of the Philippines in cooperation with the Department of Technology and CR, the OSD Technology Application and Promotion Institute, the OSD Philippine Council for Industry, Energy, and Emerging Technology Research and Development, nor the international distributors. And this event was brought to you by Esplana Engineering Review Center, Land Bank of the Philippines, Bouncy Agro Ventures Incorporated, BDO Uni Bank Incorporated, and Food Group Management Services Incorporated. We would also like student or UP Mike Also acknowledge student organizations, the PUP Minds, PUP Aggregates, PICE, PUPSC, and Rail SS. Thank you very much for your participation in this event. May we also acknowledge the following. The Dean of the College of Engineering, Dr. Emedios Ado, Engineer Jesus Benjamin, JBN Jr., Laboratory Head, Electrical Engineering Department, Engineer Jesus Calianza, Laboratory Head, Mechanical Engineering Department, Prof. Edeline Mariano, Assistant to the Vice President for Academic Affairs, Engineer Amir Cruz, the Dean of the Institute of Technology and Chair of Railway Engineering Department. Engineer Julius Cancino, Chair of Computer Engineering Department. Engineer Arvin J. Austria, Chair, Industrial Engineering Department. Engineer Vilma Perez, the Chair, Electrical Engineering Department. Engineer Jeffrey Salvador, Chair, Electronics, Communication Engineering Department. Engineer Kenneth Tana, Chair, Civil Engineering Department. Engineer Edwin Esperanza, Chair, Mechanical Engineering Department. We also acknowledge the faculty members of the College of Engineering, PUP guests from participating schools.
Sun. Sun. May now settle down and we shall begin with the presentation of the scientific researches. May I remind those who will have their presentation that your presentation is limited to 15 minutes and there will be a five minute question and answer for each of the group. Again, there will be a 15 minute presentation and a five-minute question and answer. Thank you very much. scientific research presentation again may I remind those who are going to present you were given 15 minutes for the actual presentation and five minutes for the question and answer For the first research presentation, 
researchers are from the De La Salle University. We have the following. Edrada Juanito Enrico, Eugenio Vincent, Fugado Roy Adrian, Lee Eric Stephen. The advisor is Dr. Jonathan R. Donka. The combined effects of nanomontmore elonite and halocyte nanoclay to the workability and compressive strengths. May I call the representatives from the De La Salle University for their presentation. For the first scientific research presentation, we have the combined effects of nanomontmorillonites and hyaluronite nanoclay to the workability and compressive strength of concrete. We have the De La Salle University. Researchers are Juanito Enrico Edrada, Vincent A. Eugenio, Roy Adrian Fugado, Eric Stephen Lee, Advisor Dr. Jonathan R. Dunca. Let's give them a warm round of applause. Good morning. Firstly, I would like to thank the Annual Research Awards for giving us the opportunity to present our work. It is a pleasure to showcase our research in such a platform. Anyway, let us begin. So my presentation is outlined on three questions, and I'd like to begin with the question, what? 
What is the study about? Next slide, please. So it's about concrete. Concrete is a widely used construction material that is present in most of the structures we see today. It is made up of aggregates, the fine and the coarse aggregates, the cement that acts as the binder or glue for the aggregates, and water. Because cement won't act as a binder without interaction with water. So what is the problem? In every construction project, there are specifications for concrete, especially in strength, and upon which this results to an increased proportion of ingredients so that you would comply with these specifications. But this is not always practical in construction because of the expense and the availability of the ingredients itself. Next slide, please. So the solution would be to use the solution would be is to use additives and supplementary materials. These are materials that can alter the properties of concrete so that you can use the specific requirements that are required in the construction. And recently, nanomaterials such as nanoclays are now utilized in, a cons uh, in concrete production to improve the strength of conventional concrete. So what are nanomaterials? Nanomaterials are just materials that, are, that have particles less than 500 nanometers. Next slide, please. So if there are already studies about nanoclays improving uh, concrete, what is the novelty of our research? Apparently, there hasn't been any study that describes the distinct effects of combined nanoclay types. A little background on concrete. Concrete has four main groups based on its layered structure. And apparently, no one has ever thought of using two groups of nanoclay in concrete. Well, this is important because we need to establish an effective approach to utilize these nanomaterials. So next slide, please. So basically, our research is all about adding nanoclay in your conventional concrete. Next slide. So the overview of our study is that we use nanomontmorillonite and halocyte nanoclay, from which, therefore, I would call NMT and HNCl from now on. So nanomontmorillonite, or NMT, is from the montmorillonite group, and the HNCl is from the kalonite group. And these are usually favored in uh, concrete production because of its performance as effective fillers. So the concrete specimens were investigated in terms of workability and compressive strength. I'm going to elaborate what workability and compressive strength of concrete later. So next slide, please. So I mentioned that nanoclays are effective fillers. What do I mean by that? So when cement particles are exposed to water, it would release calcium silicate hydrate, which would form the final product of concrete. The final product of concrete, as you may have seen in the bottom right corner, they still have voids present within these layers. So when these materials, nanoclay, meaning nano in size, um, these very small materials can fit in into these voids, and it will result to a denser structure, thereby increasing the compressive strength of concrete. Next slide, please. What is workability? Workability is how concrete would fill in the shape of its mold. Take a glass of water, for example. If you put water in a glass, how easily it would take the shape of the glass. That's workability. Next slide, please. And then compressive strength. Um, concrete, apparently, uh, in design, we only consider the 28-day the strength of concrete. Why? Because at the 28-day strength of concrete, um, there is an asymptotic relationship. So beyond 28 day, the compressive strength of concrete is relatively the same. Next slide, please. So how is the study done? Next slide. Next slide, please. We use ACI standards, the American Concrete Institute, Section 211.1, and ASTM standards for our methodology. 
So all of our methods are based from these books. Next slide. So these are our concrete specimens. Um, I'll start with control. Control will serve as the basis of our data. It will tell us how significant our results are. So we didn't put any nanoclay in it. Now we have two main groups of concrete samples, the A samples and the B samples. In the A samples, these are already published in literatures. Basically, we're just repeating it. Uh, the percentage replacement are reference from these literatures, 0.5% and 2.5%. Uh, by the way, the percentage replacement is in terms of cement weight. So basically, we have 99.5% cement and 0.5% NMT. So going to the focus of our study, which is combining nanoclay, NMT, and HNCL, this B samples would be the primary uh, focus of our group. Uh, we've established the percentage replacement based from the existing literatures. Since the effective replacement for nanoclay in A samples are 0.5 and 2.5, we've speculated that the percentage replacement for combined samples are within that range. So it's, we've established 1, 3, and 5%. And we've also did that to determine the trend of compressive strength as you increase the amount of nanoclay in concrete. Next slide, please. So using the ACI standards section 211.1, we've established the working mix design per 20 specimens. These are already in kilograms. Next slide, please. So these are our samples. This is, I think, B2 samples. Uh, on the left, on the right side would be the uh, fresh concrete, and on the left side would be the hardened concrete. Next slide, please. And these are the nano clays. These are the pictures of nano clay. Below, you would see the powdered form of nano clay. This is what it would look like in the naked eye. But if you put it in a scanning electron microscope, you would see the images above. That is at 10,000 magnification. So you would see that on the right side is the NMT, which has spherical particles. And on the left side are HNCL, which has um, cylindrical uh, particles. Next slide, please. So how do we measure the workability of concrete? We use a slump test. As you can see in the GIF there, slump test is measured by putting concrete in a cone and when you lift the cone there would be a deflection in the height of concrete that deflection is the slump that measures the workability of concrete the greater the slump the workable the concrete is next slide so how do we measure the compressive strength we use a hydraulic press from that hydraulic press when concrete has already cracked, it would show us the results above. It would show us how, um, how strong our concrete is for that particular day. And this is how you measure slump right here. You use only a measuring device from the top of the cone. Next slide, please. So bear with me. I know this would be technical, but please bear with me. So these are our results. As you can see in the bar plot, um, most of our samples decrease in workability when nanoclay was added. Can we show the next slide, please? Uh, this would be a better analogy. So you would see that the slump for our control is only 54 mm. That is apparently workable in construction standards. And when, you, when, we, when we added nanoclay, there is a decrease in workability. Why? Well, next slide, please. Um, you would see there, would, there is a decrease in workability as you increase the percentage replacement of nanoclay. So technically, when you add more nanoclay, concrete becomes less workable. And this is why, next slide. 
This is because clay are naturally hydrophilic. And since they are hydrophilic, the clay particles would attract the water molecules that should be distributed in the concrete mix. That is why there is less water distributed in the mix and resulting to a less workable uh, concrete. Next slide. So here, we would proceed to our compressive strength. The light yellowish one would be our control, and you would see the triangular and the diamond would be A1 and A2. You would see that A1 is relatively the same with our control in terms of compressive strength. Why is that? Because without any prior preparation with nanomont modernite, it is detrimental to concrete because there are the expansion of silicate sheets are not controlled, and the water molecule, molecules causes it to expand. Also, there are alkali cations present within these layers that are also detrimental to concrete. However, in A2, you would see an increase in strength. This is, um, this is the same with the literature we referenced. Apparently, next slide, please. In that literature, um, the compressive strength of concrete increased by 24%. And in our results, the compressive strength of concrete increased by 19%, which is relatively the same. Next slide, please. So going to our combined samples, you would identify that all of our combined samples are higher than our control. Why is that? Next slide, please. You would see that B samples are apparently higher than A samples, meaning when you combine nanoclay and, uh, and concrete, you would get a far greater result than using single nanoclays. And this is why. Because it is because of the comp compatibility of HNCl and NMT particles. Apparently, HNCl can restrict the, det the detrimental properties of NMT particles, such that both nanoclays contribute to the development of concrete strength. Next slide, please. So you would see uh, the 28-day strength of concrete here. And it is apparent that B2 has the highest increase from control, which is 27% from the initial 34.954 megapascals. However, what we would consider to be effective here is B1. Why is that? Because B1 has only 1% replacement, and it is more workable than B2. And if you compare the compressive strength, it is relatively the same. About only 0.4 difference in uh, compressive strength. So next slide, please. So if you plot the compressive strength of concrete with the amount of nanoclay, uh, this, this plot explains that it isn't necessarily uh, plausible to add more nanoclay to increase the compressive strength of concrete. There is only an optimal amount of nanoclay, and that optimal amount would yield to the maximum compressive strength of concrete. Next slide, please. So it elaborate, that plot elaborates the compressive strength of concrete because nanoclay fills in the voids. However, um, going beyond that optimal replacement, the nanoclay has already influenced in the water in the mix, such that excessive amount would decrease the compressive strength. Next slide, please. So you would see here the optimal amount of nanoclay replacement per week. So what would uh, our concern would be the 28 curing day. And we can see that the optimal replacement would be 2.5% resulting to a theoretical compressive strength of 46 MPa. This is somehow relatively the same with our actual results. So next slide, please. So I will skip the conclusion. 
Can we go to the importance of our study? So why does the study matter? Apparently, we used, um, we've computed for cost analysis of our study. Next slide, please. Uh, next slide. So per kilogram of cement, um, apparently nanoclay isn't the only material that can increase the compressive strength of concrete. However, nanoclay is the most effective and cost effective among all of the samples. Next slide, please. And apparently, you can also increase the compressive strength of concrete by adjusting the proportion of ingredients. However, it is not um, practical in construction because of the cost difference, about 450 pesos. An analogy here would be, next slide, please. When you use a four-story, 20-classroom building, next slide, please, you would save about 340,000 pesos in the total project cost by using nanoclay alone. Next slide, please. And I am proud to say that our research work is Let's already published. Let's have the comments of the evaluators. Time is up. Put in the next slide. We, may we now hear the comments from our evaluators? Uh, good morning. Yes. Good morning. I, I'm very happy seeing you all by yourself, okay, defending your work. Yes. yes. And I'm pretty sure you focus really on your work so you can answer my first question. Okay. Miss. Okay. I was listening to your presentation, and please correct me if I did not get it right. According to you, if you increase the percentage of nanoclay, then the workability decreases. Yes. Okay. And however, you did consider a certain optimal amount only of your nanoclay that could give you a higher compressive strength yes, and I considered your amount as 2.5 percent yes. am I right yes do you mean 2.5 percent you're getting the water cement ratio by weight yes is it by weight yes by weight okay miss. that means 2.5 percent automatically will be added as a replacement to cement, cement. yes miss. okay Adding this, everything will be 100%, okay? okay? But the water cement ratio will not be affected. Do you add the same amount of water? Um, can you please repeat the question? 100% water cement ratio. Yes. Okay? According to you, 2.5% will be replaced, okay, for cement. That's not water, miss. That's nanoclay. No, 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 no. It's like this. Nano clay, 2.5%. Yes. Replacement for cement. Cement, yes. Okay? So if we add the two, cement will now be 97.5% only. Is that my understanding? Why is it 97? Yes, yes, that's, that's correct. Is yes. it correct? Yes, okay. yes. My question is, if you replace 2.5% nano clay for cement, does the water cement ratio, okay, change? No, miss. Well, when we conducted our study, the water cement ratio remains... Remains constant? Yes, it okay. remains constant. If it remains constant, what is the effect, okay, to the compressive strength? Um, compressive strength... Because when, when, um, when you have a drier mix, it relatively results to a higher compressive strength, but not too dry. So when clay particles um, attracted the water molecules, it resulted to a drier mix, which would increase the compressive strength. However, a too dry mix would not be too good because um, it is somehow detrimental to concrete strength. Okay, so in other words, increasing the nanoclay 
after 2.5%, not effective anymore. Yes, miss. Do you find this 2.5% replacement as effective, significant? Yes, miss. Apparently, we did uh, st statistical analysis with our data, and it shows that the results are significant. We use analysis of variance and t-testing, and the difference in results are apparently significant. Okay, thank you. Hey, um, I just um, saw in your abstract that the ratio for the two nanoclay is a constant one is to five. Yes, miss. Um, how did you come up with this ratio? Actually, that's from the effective replacement of the individual, which is 0.5 and 2.5. Divide that, you would get 1 is to 5. Okay. Um, but did you, did you consider changing the ratio for more effectivity or for the variables you have set as tests? Um, no, miss. But we would like to recommend that we using different ratios in our uh, in the data. Thank you. In fact, that is my question because uh, you are you are in the category of scientific research, and in experimentation, the proportion is very critical in terms of coming up with established one is to five, and then you use that in all your substitution, yes. right? So it means to say, everything will be affected if you change the proportion. And that's what's supposed to be I'm looking for, coming up with established proportion 1 is to 5. Before coming up with a different experiment of substituting 1, 3, and 5. Meaning to say your 1, 3, and 5 percent is basically 1 is to 5 proportion, all of them. So in short, for me, that is immaterial. Coming up with 1 is to 5 is the most important in this particular event. Because you say that the combined effects. If it is the combined effects, then it means to say that 2 should be properly established first. Okay? That's my only uh, query to you as far as your research. Thank you you are in the scientific category. Uh... Did you have the nano? Can you please repeat your question? I'll come here now. I was just thinking, did you ever consider the cost of nano clay since this will replace the a part of the Yes, if um, if you have seen earlier, I've presented a cost analysis of nano clay. And apparently, it is much cheaper than any other supplementary material. And it is much cheaper than adjusting your mix. So it's about, when adjusting your mix, you would cost about 400 pesos per cubic meter of concrete. However, if you only add nano clay to increase the strength, it would only cost 33 pesos. So that much different in strength. And apparently, so suppl uh, in supplementary materials, Nano clay is the most efficient and cost effective. Okay, thank you very much. Let's give a warm round of applause for the first presentation from the De La Salle University. The combined effects of nano montmorillonites and halocyte nano clay to the workability and compressive strength of the country. Thank you very much once again. Okay, first presentation pa lang. That was intense. Now, we'll move on with the next presentation. We have from the Mapua University with the title, Power Output Enhancement of Plant Microbial Fuel Cells Through Stocking and Compartmentalization. The researchers are Alan Mark A. Bundok, Mark Vincent Imanansala, and advisor, Christopher Ray S. Pamintuan. A warm round of applause.
So good morning to all of our distinguished judges and audience alike. On behalf of the Plant Microbial Fuel Cell Team, I would be representing our study entitled Power Enhancement of Plant Microbial Fuel Cells Through Stacking and Compartmentalization. I am Alan Mark Angeles Bundok and my partner, Mark Vincent Manansala. Next slide, please. So before I, I continue, I want to give you a brief background on the relevance of our topic. As the population in the world increases, there comes a subsequent increase in the, in the demand for resources, particularly energy in the form of electricity. So with the advent of global warming in our, in our efforts to curb our dependency on fossil fuels, we turn into cleaner energy sources known as renewable energy sources. Some examples would be solar power or wind power. Now, despite the immense advantages of renewable energy sources over non-renewable energy sources, they also have their inherent disadvantages. Mainly, they take up a lot of land space to produce a non-equivalent amount of energy. So through innovation, new, newer systems have been developed and which utilize biomass to generate electricity. And these systems are known as bioelectrochemical systems, or BES. One such example would be plant microbial fuel cells, which I will be discussing in the slides. Next slide, please. So in order to understand PMFCs, I'd like to first give an example of a plant, a model plant. So through the, through the process of photosynthesis, we know that plants take in light, carbon dioxide, water, and nutrients to generate biomass for their growth. However, we are not taught about some, a term called rise of deposits, which account for up to 70% of the photosynthetic product. Are important because they, are, they act as food source for the ba beneficial bacteria in the soil. And this, and this bacteria and the plant have a mutual, mutualistic relationship since the rice deposits are food for the bacteria and the bacteria generate nutrients needed for the plant growth. Next slide, please. So rice deposits are consumed by the bacteria and through their metabolic process they produce carbon dioxide and water. However, there are specialized bacteria in the soil that are known as exoelectrogenic bacteria, which also generate electrons after when they metabolize. Now, the way that these electrons that are generated by the exoelectrogenic bacteria, they can be harvested by strategically placing electrodes in the soil in the presence of the bacteria. So the electrons will flow through the electrodes, and then we can and and then we can uh, generate and we can. We can uh, generate the electricity. Next slide, please. So the significance of this study is that through studying smaller scales and by optimizing the power generation, and we would translate this to by bridging the gap of smaller, smaller scale setups into larger industrial size, such as plantations or vegeta vegetation fields. So in, this, in such a way that we would produce biomass and electricity simultaneously. Some other auxiliary advantages of the large-scale implementation would be it avoids land conversion and loss since it promotes the, the production of biomass and electricity simultaneously. Second, it suppresses methanogenesis, which we know agriculture is one of the largest contributors of atmospheric methane. And then we have, and it enhances plant growth because through the process of, by producing electricity, they produce more rhizodeposits, which in turn, they produce more biomass. The next, it also enables in situ power generation for places that are not directly connected to the national power grid. Next slide. So despite the immense disadvantage, despite the immense, the immense potential of plant microbial fuel cells, they also have common hurdles that prevent it from being implemented in a large scale. Particularly for large setups, we have diff diffuse power output because of their increased external resistance. And for small scale setups, we have low power output. So our proposed solution will be, we will have two solutions. For the smaller setups, we would combine smaller sets, uh, smaller units in a process called stacking to magnify the power output. And for larger setups, we would optimize the design of the cell in a, in a technique called compartmentalization. Next slide, please. The two main objectives of this study is to study the stacking potential of PMFCs for both aquatic and terrestrial setups. And second, we want to optimize the power generation through compartmentalization experiments. Next slide. So the methodology would be, we have two parts, the stacking and compartmentalization. 
If you can see from this figure, this is the individual cell where we have the model plant and below that we have the anode and below the anode we have a cotton separator. Below the cotton separator we have the electrode and these electrodes are uh, cathode and these cathode this these electrodes are connected to an external circuit. So the the next the next figure shows a 3 by 3 grid of these nine individually placed cells. The reason we chose this is for the ease of conducting the stacking experiment. Now for compartmentalization, we have a carpeting plant on the top layer. We then have one layer of the anode and then three layers of cathodes. Because from a previous, a previous study mentioned that a more, cath more cathodic surface area was important to generate more electricity. Next slide, please. So here, to easier visualize how the stacking was done, these are the individual cells connected both in series and in parallel. Next slide, please. So for the model plants, we have, for the stacking, we have Oregonum vulgare, or oregano, for the terrestrial setup. And then for Azola pinata, we have a mosquito fern for the aquatic setup. Now for compartmentalization, we have Cynodon dactylon, which is Bermuda grass. And the reason we chose a, a carpeting plant was in order for us to have a uniform distribution of root, roots across the entire compartment. Next slide, please. So for the most important results of stacking, we have here two figures that show the time average voltage that it, for both the terrestrial and aquatic setup. So we can see that when we have uh, the oregano, we can see at the, the, both the series and parallel, they have data that the experimental data is not sig significantly different from the theoretical data. However, for the A pinata, we have, uh, as you can see, in the, in the nine individual cells connected in series, there is a significant deviation of the experimental data over the theoretical data. So in order to further analyze why this occurs, next slide, please. No, next. Uh, we have here, we, we perform a technique called cumulative stacking, which is basically connecting cells in by increasing the number of cells in both series and in parallel. So as you can see for the terrestrial setup, the experimental data coincides or is in accordance with the uh, theoretical data. However, at, in the aquatic setup, when the number of cells connected is more than five, we can see that there is, after five, we can see that there is extreme deviation from the theoretical data. One way to explain this is that water conducts ions more easily, so the ions are more free to move in water as a substrate. However, for the terrestrial setup, soil offers a beneficial resistance to the system that allows us to create this voltage gradient. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. So for compartmentalization, we first, in order to optimize the design, first we wanted to study the, the vertical distance optimization between the anode and cathode. And as you can see from the graph, we have a maximum, this, a maximum voltage registered when the, when the vertical distance was 3 inches. However, we can also note that at 4 inches, the voltage was relatively the same through stati statistical tests or t-tests. However, in order to in, as a basis for this experiment, we, we assume that the three inches would give the maximum voltage. Next slide, please. So after optimizing vertical distance, we wanted to optimize the inter-electrode distance or the horizontal distance. And as you can see, at 18 centimeters, the voltage reading would be maximum. Beyond 18 centimeters, we can see that there's a drastic decrease in voltage. The reason be behind this is that we have increased electrical resistance. Now, if we study from zero to 18, Despite, their, their, despite their, the small increments in the voltage, we can note that if we place multiple electrodes between the 0 and 18 mark, there would, there would, it would result in increased ohmic losses, and therefore, these electrodes would be a waste of materials. Next slide, please. So for, compart you, for, so for the anode and cathode limited part, this was important for us to determine which half cell was the rate limiting. So as you can see in the cathode limited, which is on your right, if we increase the number of anodes connected to, to, to just one cathode, both the power and power density would decrease. What this means is that the half reaction in the cathode is the rate limiting reaction. Now for the anode limited, here we can see that a maximum power and power density was obtained 
when the number of cathodes was connected to four. So one anode is to four cathodes. What this means is that in order to optimize the compartment, we need to have more surface area of the cathode over the anode. Next slide, please. Next slide. So for the, we, we now study the multiple electrode systems by increasing the number of paired electrons in the PMFC. On your left, we have the PMFC or the plant microbial fuel cell. On your right, we have the microbial fuel cell. As you can see on the right, the trend is that if we increase the number of connected electrodes or paired electrodes, the total power would increase. However, the total power density would decrease. So that point, which is the intersection between the power and power density in, a, in an MFC, is the, it signifies the maximum amount of electrodes that can only be connected in, the, in an MFC. Now for PMFC, we can see that both the power and power density increases without signs of plateau or decrease. What this means is that if we were to increase the number of paired electrodes, electrodes we were to assume that both the power and power density would still increase. Next slide. So with that, I come to four conclusions from my stacking and from our stacking and compartmentalization research. First, terrestrial PMFCs respond well to stacking without loss of power. And second, if we were to increase more than five cells connected in an aquatic setup, there, there, it would result in severe voltage loss. Next, an anode, an anode cathode spacing of vertical distance of three inches is ideal, and horizontal distance of 18 centimeters is important. Next, we would put more importance of, of the cathodic surface area over the anode surface area. So from the research, it was, me it was mentioned that anode to cathode ratio would be one is to four. So with that being said, although plant microbial fuel cells are in the early stages of development, we believe that our research is integral to one day achieving a commercially viable electricity generation through the use of plant microbial fuel cells. Thank you. Thank you very much. May we now hear comments from our panel of evaluators. Hello, sound check. Hello, okay. Now you are talking there of plant microbial fuel cell that actually was specific plant. Hello, ah, okay. Clearances and considering plants distribution of roots na no? yun yung kailangan ko makita because the application of the pen the kind of plant that you are going to place that particular anode I don't know about those particular things ma farmer how would I be able to use your idea if I have this kind of plant so for compartmentalization, we are, since this is a preliminary study, it involves a carpeting plant, which is they have long roots compared to food-bearing plants that, like mungo, that has small roots. So what we utilized in packing was food-bearing plants, the small roots. And for compartmentalization, since we have a big setup, we want longer roots, so we used Bermuda grass. Since you use Bermuda grass, how much are you going to sell? Take note, those are actually located in an area wherein it is for residential or recreational, no? So, establishing Bermuda grass as compared to utilization in the far-flung area, sa tingin mo saan bebenta na mas kailangan ng power itong idea mo kaysa sa plant na pinopromote mo. Because... Power is badly needed by farmers in the field. So why did you choose Bermuda on the first place? Yun lang ang tanong. Sir, um, for this study, um, it's, it's, it's just a preliminary research. So we're just trying to um, 
test for Bermuda grass, but we can also suggest recommendations to make um, other um, make the study for other plants like rice for plant for donations. I have already researched your paper, and in fact, many researchers have already used plant microbial fuel cell. The only application that I'm looking for is application of this for those far-flung areas where farmer is actually located. Testing the technical viability is already well proven. Thousands of literatures. In fact, kanina pa ako nagre-research. Gusto ko lang makita kung saan siya commercially viable, saan siya well needed, and that's supposed to be the first thing in the utilization of the, te uh, of the research. Kasi well proven na yan, plant microbial cell. Ang gusto ko lang makita is more of what is the uniqueness of your research compared to the other research already taken care of by other researchers. Ano ang unique? So our our research is important for the design. As we as we've the design, design. Let's say for for compartmentalization, we can see that. We placed multiple layers of cathodes where there are multiple electrodes, right? I mentioned earlier that from 0 to 18 centimeters, if we were to add multiple electrodes in between, assuming that if we add more electrodes, we would generate more electricity. However, the fact that if we add more electrodes, it would actually contribute to more wastage of materials. So our, yes, costly. And so our basis is that we want to optimize this for commercial use for a cheaper, in a cheaper way. Because studies um, generally include more extensive materials as compared to ours. Okay, it comes to your uh, no, no, assessment that putting a lot of electrodes will get more expenses on the part of yes. those who will adapt. Now, what kind of plants, as far as this research is concerned, will utilize less electrodes because of the root distribution? Yun yun dapat makita. Ng, ano, ng research mo kasi ang innovation mo is more putting more electrodes, right? Yes. Correct. Because you want to get more power. You want to, uh, you want uh, to know the uh, optimized distance the, between the Optimize the, the cell, yes. Optimization is coming up with putting up a lot of electrodes and anodes there. Am I correct? Not, not necessarily and, in and putting too much electrodes. No, no, but I... Yes, yes. Multiple. Yes. Yeah, multiple. So in that particular case, anong plant sa tingin mo na in the, anyway on yes it's we only want on, since uh, it's the grass lang okay so that's the limitation yes. and yes. then uh, other may take may take care of other the questions but for me uh, mas maganda sana ang application yan kung sa farmers mo ina ano Sir, there's an ongoing study po being conducted by other groups that um, highlights the use of Mungo. So it uses also the compartmentalization. Paano nyo? It's, it's, it's still ongoing, sir. They're just doing results. Thank you, sir. Dry. Was limited. No, this research, this research was actually limited to just where he lives because we performed the, exp the experiment on households, in a household, not exactly in the land, in the plantations. We're asking that question because uh, one of the criteria is something on commercial viability. There's actually That's why we are looking into that direction. That if you do your risk, then probably okay another suggestion for improvement try to research there is already a lot of information yes. regarding putting up plant rice plants yes. in roofs of buildings established na yung kanilang ano no ginagamit na ngayon ng building somewhere in japan ginagamit na yung kailang building for plantation. So, siguro ito yung for rice pa to. So, for those particular studies, fixed na yung concrete nila, fixed na yung height of uh, yes. yeah. soil, and then that's where you can possibly 
go into to come up with aside from using the building uh, the roof the rooftop of the building for a plant uh, plantation you can go you can use that also for generating power yun lang naman ang suggestion ko okay thank you very much once again mapuwa in, mapuwa university for your presentation on power output enhancement of plant microbial fuel cells through stocking and compartmentalization okay so we'll proceed with our third scientific research presentation we have from the university of perpetual helps delta system palamba campus and the research is about exploratory using bacteria bacillus subtilis as a self-healing concrete, a basis of strengthening infrastructure in the Philippine setting. We have the researchers Maggie Lagazo, Carla Noriesta, and Marlu Montecalvo. Special thanks to Actenture, Paperlink, Federation of Alumni Associations of PUP Incorporated, PUP College of Engineering Association, Smart Emerson, Primer Group of Companies. The Department of Science and Technology and R DOST Technology and Promotion Institute, DOST Philippine Council for Industry, Energy and Emerging Technology Research and Development. Nor the international distributors. We would also like to thank the following schools who participated in this event 
Bataan Peninsula State University, Bulacan State University, Cagayan State University, De La Salle University, Manila, Eulogio Amang Rodriguez Institute of Science and Technology, FEU Institute of Technology, Holy Angel University, ICCT Colleges Foundation Incorporated, Jose Rizal University, Mapua University, Marinduque State College. Also, we have the National University, Palupon Institute of Technology, Pamantasa ng Lunsod ng Manila, Polytechnic University of the Philippines, Technological Institute of the Philippines, Technological University of the Philippines, University of Perpetual Health System, and the University of the East. We would also like to thank the student organizations, PUP Minds, PUP Aggregates, PUP PIES, and the PUP Railway Engineering Student Society. For the next presentation, for scientific research, we have exploratory using bacteria, Bacillus subtilis, as a, a basis of strengthening infrastructure. Good day everyone. Again, we are from the University of Perpetual Health System, Calambas Campus. And we are here to present to you our project design entitled Exploratory Study Using Bacteria Bacillus Subtilis as a Self-Healing Concrete, a Basis for in Strengthening Infrastructure in the Philippine Setting. We are all aware of the saying, prevention is better than cure. So, what if cracks in concrete could fix themselves or heal themselves? We all know that concrete cement is the most major material work used in construction works. It is composite material combined with sand, gravel, water, and cement that hardens over time. And we all know for a fact that no matter how careful the concrete is mixed or reinforced with steel bars, it eventually ends up in cracking at some point. These cracks in concrete are responsible for the transports of liquids and gases that could potentially harmful that could potentially contain harmful substances. And once these substances enters, it will start to degrade the concrete, reduce the performance and durability of every structures. And when this happens, it will require an expensive maintenance in the form of repairs. And when this cracks grows and reach the reinforcement, not only the concrete may damage itself, but it will start the corrosion due to the exposure of water, oxygen, carbon dioxide, and some chlorides too. So we can now say that these cracks or micro cracks are then responsible for the structural failure of every buildings or structures. So maybe right now you are thinking, what is bacterial concrete or what is a self-healing concrete? Next slide, please. Bacterial concrete was first introduced in late 2010 by a microbiologist, scientist Dutch, which is Hendrik Jonkers and he also collaborated with some structural engineers, wherein he think of a different way on how to use bacteria. Basically, this type of concrete mixture improves the strength of the concrete and it helps to seal cracks by means of calcite precipitation or calcite formation. And right now, you are already thinking what kind of bacteria that we are using or what is Bacillus subtilis. Next slide, please. 
Bacillus subtilis is a gram-positive, rod-shaped bacterium. It is usually found in soil. It is used for some alternative medicine, and it is in line with the probiotic bacteria. And this is also called as hay or grass bacillus. It, this kind of bacteria is also can be found in our gastrointestinal uh, tract or in some ruminants. Next slide, please. As you can see on the picture, that is the actual look of ba Bacillus subtilis on the test tube. And aside from that, Bacillus subtilis is being used as a fungicide or fertilizer. Next slide. On the slide that I'm going to be showing you, this is the actual look of the Bacillus subtilis uh, on a colony morphology under the nutrient agar under a Petri dish. And the second picture is our actual bacterial solution along with the ingredients. Next slide, please. The purpose hour of his study is we would like to analyze and evaluate the effectiveness of using bacteria in sealing cracks and in increasing the strength of concrete in different methods. Aside from that, we would also like to evaluate if there is any health risk in using the bacteria of concrete mixture. Next slide, please. So the significance of our study for the student, we would like to share the knowledge about the bacteria, how this bioconcrete is beneficial to our ever-growing construction industry. For the environment, we would like to prove if the bioconcrete is eco-friendly and will lessen the construction waste in terms of rehabilitations. Lastly, for our construction industry, we would like to provide a better option for the ever-growing material cost. Next slide, please. So for this one, I'm going to be showing you the materials, the apparatuses that we have used in mixing, culturing, and incubating of the bacteria. Next slide. So the chemicals that we have used is urea broth, sodium bicarbonate, ammonium chloride, and calcium chloride dehydrate. All of these chemicals are the ones, or this will be the nutrients or prote uh, nutrients of the bacteria while, he, uh, while the bacteria is inside the concrete. All of our ingredients uh, will be sterilized under 121 degrees Celsius under 151 pressurized steam. And right after that, it will be ready for incubation for 18 to 24 hours. That is to make sure that uh, the bacteria will reach its turbidity level. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. Next slide. Next slide, please. And that is the autoclave. Next slide, please. Before inducing the bacteria on our solution, it is done on the biosafety cabinet. That is to make sure there is no other contaminants aside from the bacteria that we are using. Next slide, please. That is the one ready for uh, incubation. Next slide. All of our specimen or the mixture or the proportion of our concrete is according to ASTM C64, which is 1 is to 2.5 is to 5. That is the standard uh, ratio pro proportioning for the infrastructure. All of our specimen are casted with bacteria and without bacteria, hardened and molded within 24 hours, and ready for curing for 7, 14, and 28 days. Next slide, please. And there are some tests that we have done to see if there is a significant uh, using bacteria when it comes to the strength of concrete. That is namely our compressive strength test, split tensile, st uh, split tensile test. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. Flexural test. And we also done a water absorption test. Next slide. Next slide, please. If you can see on the picture, we do have uh, two specimens, which is the conventional concrete without any uh, bacteria. And on the other one, that is our bacterial concrete with the Bacillus subtilis. As you can observe or as you can see, there is already a calcite precipitation uh, because of the white marks or white spots that is happening. Next slide, please. For the results in our discussion, as you can see, from November 2018 and 
up to February 2019, there is a difference between uh, in sealing cracks or or you can see that there are already the calcite precipitation that happened. Next slide, please. That would be the same. Next slide. Okay, this is from uh, the start. Uh, after uh, we demolded one of our specimen, we intentionally uh, put some cracks on it. And as you can see from the third day after um, we demolded it, the second week, fifth week, second month, and third month, there is a visible healing process. Next slide, please. Next slide. These are the results of our test that we have done. As you can see on the graph, there is a difference or an increase when it comes to a compressive strength test for our bacterial concrete. Next slide. That would be the same for our speed tensile uh, strength test. Next slide, please. And for our flexural test. Next slide. For the summarization, as you can see, for the compressive split and tense, uh, compressive split and flexural strength test, for the seven days, fourteen days, and twenty-eight days curing period, you can see that for our bacterial concrete, there is a, a difference or an increase of strength, and this is uh, supported by our significance statistical t-test. Next slide, please. And that is our for water absorption test. Though for our water absorption, the only uh, amount of water that our bacterial resist is 0.02. However, there's still a difference for that. Next slide, please. And this is, uh, this is the result for our statistical test. This is for the compressive strength test. Next slide. And for the flexural, as you can see, all of the results are significant. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. For our conclusions, the, research, the researchers conclude that the additional of concrete of 30 ml to the 1 cubic meter of mixture Bacillus subtilis can withstand the compressive strength, flexural, and split tensile test. And Bacillus subtilis can be produced in laboratory as it is proven to be safe because the biosafety level is only one and it is a bacteria that can be found in soil. Next slide, please. For our recommendation, we recommend to use different cell co uh, concentration or volume of the bacterial solution of Bacillus subtilis per cubic meter in concrete mixture. We also recommend to use a different type of bacteria such as E. coli, Esporacerchina, Pasturi, Schwannella species. And also, we would like to ask uh, other researchers or recommend to use other test parameters such as porosity, acid-resistant tests, and chloride tests. And lastly, more materials with different volume of bacteria are recommended to get different outcomes and possible higher strength. That's all, and thank you. Thank you very much. We shall now listen to the comments of our evaluators. Hello. Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, first, I want to congratulate you and your colleagues for having a good study. Thank you. Okay. Um, I have a few questions. Uh, first, what is the difference of Bacillus subtilis from Bacillus pseudofermos? Uh, Bacil second, okay, I, I, sure, go ahead. Second, in terms of its cost, by how much does its cost differ from those of other ways of retrofitting? Okay. To answer your first question, the difference between Bacillus subtilis and Pseudoformis. Bacillus subtilis, as I say uh, a while ago, it is found in soil and it doesn't help any or pose any health risk to human. While for the uh, Pseudoformis, um, it as in some studies that we have tried to check, that we have tried to check, it sometimes may uh, impose health risk to human. And when it comes, and when it comes for the cost of you were saying retrofitting, I can say that ba using bacteria or bacterial concrete will be more efficient and econo economical because once uh, what we are preventing here or what we would like on this study uh, to show is prevention is better than cure. So. 
if the if the bacterial concrete or the bacteria itself already healed the crack. So no need for the retrofitting anymore. Thank you, sir. Uh, good morning. Good morning, ma'am. Well, your study could help the civil engineering field. Yes. But I was listening to your presentation. You made mention to simply add that bacteria. And you considered one concrete mixture. And one is to 2.5 is to 5, according to you which is being used for infrastructures. Am I right? Yes, ma'am. Okay. If we're going to add a certain amount of bacteria to that concrete mixture, how does the compressive strength, okay, affect, how does this bacteria affect the compressive strength? And you did not consider the right amount of this bacteria to be added. You simply presented, we add, we add this bacteria, okay, and it can heal the cracks, and it can even increase the compressive strength and flexural strength, according to you. But I did not see the presentation as to how much the amount of this bacteria to be added in every concrete mixture and convincing me that the strength really is affected. It is an increase. Do you have in your study? Uh, that is only for that. Now, why not present different proposing? Okay? Say, for example, you have class A, 1 is to 2 is to 4. This is the right amount of bacteria to increase the compressive strength, and it will heal the cracks. Hello? I want to see that in your study. Okay? You simply tell us, you add this bacteria. You add this bacteria. And it is what? A bacterial concrete. Please uh, make your study specific as to how much will be added to the proportioning of every concrete mixture. Okay? To convince me. Thank you. Hello. Also for test. Hello, hello. Your test time is three. <laughs> Testing three months, right? So it's a relative long time. And but there are aside from the um, amount that you've mentioned, there are also very variables to be considered within that time because we're dealing with a living thing so temperature humidity and the likes have you ever considered those in your system because i didn't see the data we No, no. What I mean is uh, the the system itself. Of course, you have this structure, but during the three months' time, we have different temperature, and, and your system change. So that, uh, it's already a variable in your test. Did you consider the effectivity? It said that after after a month, it will heal. 
but how many percent from the original at the original state is healed after a month and if the variables i have mentioned is um, a factor for that healing or if effectivity No, the humidity of the temperature. Okay. The question is similar to the first panelist regarding the amount of bacteria. How did you come up with a dilution factor of 10 is to 5? How did you arrive at 10 is to 5 as a fixed solution for your microbial concentration? So in your study, you didn't change. You just copy or you just follow whatever. What is the innovation in your uh, research? Performance because this is an aerobic. Yes, sir, that is correct. So when it is a, you don't need an air for it to cultivate. Yes, sir, that is so why do you, do you say that it is uh, no, uh, it is being used because when you turn contract cement, it's supposed to be aerobic because it is exposed. Niya eh. so big nga ang kanyang characteristic so in short he will not be able to multiply fast in an aerobic condition yes. 
doesn't straight and nutrients for all microorganisms depends primarily number one. Kaya nga meron tayong big Okay, so you insist, but I want you to still study on that. Please, uh, I don't, I don't believe that it is Basilis for me. But number one considerations that you have to tell me for me to be convinced is in Basilis subtilis as your organ, tawag natin bacteria in healing. Did you try considering the three months period quite long? Did you try? Your formulation first in a cement that has cracked and you your solution in sealing that and observe the formation of calcium. follow the formulation of 30 ml of a dilution factor of 10 is to 5. How did you come up with 30 ml? Assuming na constant na yung 10 is to 5 mo, sabi mo, kinopya mo. Pati ba naman yung 30 ml, kinopya mo pa rin? Ah, ah, ah. So, hindi wala wala kayong volumes. Yun ang nakalagay sa inyo, varying volumes. Kasi, dilution factor mo, 10 is to 5. Pwede ka mag-dilution factor na mas mababa. Mas mababa rin ang volume mo. Pero ang point ko lang dito is coming up with a volume. Kasi alam ko naman, hindi ako sa... Definitely, you are going to mix it in a cement, which is affected by the amount of water in the construction industry. It's very critical. Coming up with a volume of solution that will be added, and you are not recommending... The amount of cement, o yung proportion sana no, na makikita natin, kung ano yung established na construction industry, dapat may series ka ng volume. Kasi yun ang nire-recommend mo. Strengthening infrastructure eh. No? Yung makaka-affect. Affect. Oh, sige, thank you. Were you guided by a microbe? or a bacteriologist when you conducted your research? Like this, I would suggest if you do research, you have to collaborate with the we uh not not yes, but the, the authority, no, and not not just the biologist, but more on bi bacteriologist. So, in your research, uh, examine the effect of. Pain effect ng paint on the concrete effect Thank you. 
Thank you very much. University of Perpetual Health System Delta for your presentation on exploratory using bacteria Bacillus subtilis as a self-healing concrete, a basis of strengthening infrastructure in the Philippine setting. Okay, so for our audience, we are going to have the best selfie for the 12th Annual Research Award. Use the hashtag 12th Araw when taking pictures at your photo. Utilize your FB page. And then afterwards,
Let us now listen to the comments of our evaluators. Okay, thank you very much for the nice presentation. My only question here is, uh, have you tried, kindly show me the, the loop ng tube? Uh, 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 uh. Uh, what else? Uh, you will know that is spiral, and I would just like to know if you have tried a shorter loop for that particular. Uh, so, ano ang effect if it is a shorter loop? Kasi napakarami ng loop nyo, no? So, ano ang effect? Okay. Now, in this particular design, I, I, I search no? and I want to find out what is the uniqueness of this particular design to the other Pico hydro, hydro Power that you can say it's really yours and you can say that it can be IP protected on the part of CSU. Okay, uh, so in that particular case, that is the uniqueness. So have you tried IP protecting that? Okay, sige. Kailangan nyo i-protect yan kasi... <laughs> A round of applause. Hello sound, check one, two, hello, hello. Hello sound, hello. Sound, check, hello. Hello, hello. Sound, sound.
Chuck, Chuck. Chuck, Chuck. Hello, sound. Hello. Test my test. Hello. Sound check. Sound sound check. One two. Hello, sound. Sound. Test my test. Test my test. 